Yes, yes. Welcome to the ancient world of tabletop games. I am Agamemnon from the historical documentary Time Bandits. This is a report from a fugitive. This statue's gone to pot, and that is a model-making fact. The giant walking statue for Dungeons and Dragons, Waterdeep, ended up in deep water. That really is a model-making fact. What went wrong, and how did I fix it? The problem is easy enough to see in small plastic figures. We'll call it the bendy sword problem. The solution is warm water. There are two basic methods of fixing a warped plastic miniature. Both involve dunking the figure into warm water. Boil a kettle, pour the water into a bowl, let the water cool a bit, dip the model into the water, remove, dip the model into cold water, and that should be that. In the first method, take no action beyond heating and cooling the model. Using water is enough to do the job. This warped sword or that bendy musket simply returns to the shape it had in the mold. As soon as you see the piece move back into its proper shape under warm water, you fix that in place using the cold water. And in the second method, you don't see the affected piece shift at all, so you have to give it a helping hand by nudging it into place while warm. If you're happy with the result, dip the model into cold water. The second approach is less likely with a bendy sword and more likely when dealing with a warped leg made of thicker plastic. Almost all of these repair jobs are tackled using the first method. Dip into the warm water, do nothing but watch, then dip into cold water to fix. Obviously, this model is a shade larger than the usual figure and it presented a few problems in fixing. So what's wrong with it as a product? Bluntly, the base is no good. It's about seven inches across and made of acrylic that's such a fragile material I'm surprised I didn't shatter it just by looking in that general direction. My ten thumbed hands didn't break the base, a cause of astonishment in itself. There's no give to it when gingerly test fitting the statue to the base. You are very likely to shear at least one of the three pegs from the base and I'm amazed that I didn't even come close to disaster. Let's talk about the reason for having a base. Balance. The statue comes in three parts, main body, sword, and shield. Ignoring assembly, the body stands by itself without a base, even on a table covered in the legally required gaming cloth. Once you add sword and shield to the statue, though, the overall construction is a little off balance and requires a base. The figure was a little troublesome during assembly. I hacked out a few rogue pieces of plastic inside the sword arm socket to allow the sword plug to go in. The shield arm socket was more forgiving, though still created a tight squeeze when adding that shield. Brace the arm when the shield goes in, you don't want to snap a limb off. It takes a narrow modeling knife or something like a dentist's tool to get into these sockets to trim excess plastic. I used a dental golf club that came with an army painter's modeling toolkit and that managed the job. Usually the problem with fitting plug to socket comes in the plug part containing excess plastic. And that's fine. The plug is easier to pare away with a craft knife than the socket is. Here's the tail of a dinosaur and there's a bad pun in there somewhere. There are no good puns. That's the law. The tail isn't a snug fit. And there's part of the problem on the plug end. Easy fix. Remove the excess and test fit as you trim away. Getting inside the socket to trim anything is a trickier prospect, even in a large lizardy model like this. The gargantuan statue model was a difficult prospect for a small craft knife blade, and I switched to the dental golf club. You can see part of the manufacturing process in the tail socket, and there's the trouble. Those bits could do with paring down to a flush finish. The material layer is at its thinnest, though, and you don't want to wreck your model by plunging a psycho blade right through it. Those of you with ten thumbs face a higher chance of that sort of tomfoolery when gently, delicately slashing the shit out of your plastic destruction projects. Construction projects. The material is thin in places, even in massive models. Scrape a little material out, fit the pieces, get a 
feel for where you'll trim the next part away. With the pieces dry fitted, ask yourself if you are done. I mean, truly done. This massive model goes on a shelf and makes a short journey to the table. Your knight may do the rounds at conventions and other gaming gatherings. In that case, is it worth permanently gluing the sword and shield? For transportation, consider storage. This model is best kept in its plastic cocoon inside the original box. My model fits together tightly enough that I won't even bother using glue. It's an added complication overcome by the tightness of the fitting. Should you have that excess plastic problem, pair away, fit, pair away, fit, pair away, and you'll never have to worry about cutting too much. If you cut too much, then it's time for the glue. Your figure is out of the box, and you've trimmed a bit here, a touch there. You've assembled the model. What next? Fix the model to the base. That's where this fell apart. Two pegs on one foot, fine, no problem. But the second foot was wide of the mark and walked too far afield from the third peg. Clearly the leg was warped. Now was that true? Both legs could be a bit out. What do you fix? You try to fix one leg. I reached for a basin. With the sword and shield off, the model was still too large. That basin was a shade too small. I could fit the knight in there, but the head brushed up against the basin. The danger was that under warm water, the surface of the head might suffer often and deform if pressed against the basin's side. You need clear space all around to see what you're doing to the whole model while concentrating on the leg. This risk to the head was minimal. It would take a hellacious heat to deform the head and neck. I'd be a skinless D&D monster by the time we reached that stage. However, on the basis that you don't want to bump into anything you shouldn't bump into, I abandoned the basin and opted for the kitchen sink. I'd thrown in everything but the kitchen sink. It wasn't good enough. The warm water wasn't warm enough for a model with this sheer thickness of plastic. I had to go down from sink size to the soup pot. My problem was lying the model flat to give the leg full immersion. Changing over to upright immersion in a container narrower than the sink was one way of concentrating the heat into the problem area. I gave no thought to the paint job. Fixing plastic miniatures in hot water is a job performed on unpainted miniatures. What choice did I have here? No choice. Heat the model and hope that the paint doesn't slough off. Needless to say, the while say it anyway, after each immersion I checked for lack of progress. Just looking at the model, I thought the plastic too thick to move on its own when heated. I need to step in and alter the leg position. Start modestly. The water could have been warmer. I used warmer water. Still no action. I moved through the containers until I reached that soup pot. This filled quickly and held the heat well. It also held the giant model well enough to avoid disaster. The warmest water still didn't shift the warped leg on its own. I lifted the model out and braced the leg. This was a tough piece of plastic to work on without creating a bendy leg in the other direction. Gradually, behind the knee, the plug and socket in there gave way and pressure warped the plug slightly. I risked ripping the leg out at the knee, but everything was gradual and my ten thumbs made it through. This slight repositioning and loosening of the leg worked. The alteration took the foot nearer its official position. Not a hundred percent there, but within enough tolerance to make for an okay fit on the base. Leaving the kitchen sink behind, I assembled the figure. Still looked okay. No lopsided limbs. The sword went on and the shield, and then the whole thing took a bit of work to attach to the acrylic base. But I don't like the fragility of the base, and it's only a matter of time before a peg goes lodged inside the foot. So ask yourself that question about storage and travel and all the difficulties you'll have if you keep attaching and removing the base. After fixing the leg, I found the statue stood much more steadily without a base. So there is that. It'll make the job of adding a sturdy base easier. What are the options? Create a diorama from scratch and provide the most secure platform imaginable. Take a custom base and glue the statue to it. Straight glue, no pins or posts. Alternatively, take a custom base and drill into it and provide pegs that go up into the model's feet. Or just go for a plain plinth, a circle or oval of wood. Glue the model on or drill for pins. I have many spare connectors for bookshelves. One connector fits right in there. Yes, only one. All three peg holes are different sizes to accommodate the shape of the feet. I'm undecided. An acrylic base risks cracking and shattering during transportation in a way that's less forgiving than wood would be. And yes, when I speak of transport, I do mean moving the model from shelf to table. My ten thumbs are liable to drop the statue in a unique way that renders the model into ash. This model fix is a game of two halves. Sort out the limb problem. Done. Find a better base. 
to be continued. It has to be something that doesn't risk warping the base or warping the feet, with a minimum of fuss in constructing sturdy pegs. The alternative is straight epoxy or superglue to the feet on a wooden plinth, and I know I'd have to build up the soles with milliput modelling clay first, to give a uniform flatness to the statue's plastic soles. In a few of the earlier sections of this video, before resorting to water, I used one camera to prop the figure up while filming with the other camera. If I go for a full diorama, I'll just lop the sword arm off, build a giant wolf onto the end of the arm and call that dog a Fenrir. When people view the statue, they'll utter the age-old cry of approval. Seems legit.